Okay, so we know that we want our current sources to have high impedance. And so in this video, we're going to look at a way to increase the impedance of a current source. And namely, that's going to be by cascoding the current source. So here we have a couple of examples of cascoded current sources shown. The MOS device on the left and the BJT devices on the right. Now, cascoding is a technique where we stack two transistors on top of one another. It's a little bit different than a cascade. A cascade is a sequence of amplifiers that are arranged in series with one another. A cascode is two transistors that are stacked on top of one another from drain to source. We see that clearly here with the transistors on the right in these current sources. Now, if we assume that all the transistors M1 through M4 are equal, or Q1 through Q4 are equal, we can say that the reference currents are equal to the output currents. Of course, we can write an expression for the reference current as well. IR is equal to BDD minus 2BBE divided by RR, or for the MOS device, IR is equal to BDD minus 2VGS divided by RR. Now, the reason that we did this is to try and increase the output resistance of the current source. So we're going to look to see what the output resistance of these current sources are. And indeed, the output resistance is equal to RO2 times 1 plus GM2 times RO2. One, if we assume that the devices are approximately equal, we can write this as approximately equal to GMRO squared. We can write a similar expression for the bipolar case. In other words, we can say that the output resistance is approximately the intrinsic gain times the resistance of one of the stages. Now, what does this cost? Well, let's do a KVL around the loop shown by the red arrow. So we can clearly see that to get to the red point that I've highlighted here, we have two VGSs, and then we have to go down one more VGS to get to this point. And that means that we require a VGS across this bottom device. Now, the top device only requires an overdrive voltage or a VOV. We can show the same thing for the bipolar case. We need a VBE across the bottom device in the cascode stack. And across the top device, we would just need a VCE sat. So we can write that the minimum voltage that's allowed at the output terminal, V min is equal to a VGS plus a VOV. Now remember that we've since said that VGS can be equal to VOV plus VTH. So we need a 2 VOV plus a VTH across this device. Now for the bipolar device, we need VBE plus a VCE set. With the numbers that we've been using, this is approximately 0 0.9 volts, 0.7 for VBE and 0.2 for VCE set. Let's assume that our VOV for the MOS case needs to be about 0.25 volts. This means that our VMIN is equal to 0 0.9 volts. If VBD is equal to 1.8 volts, this is 50% of the supply rail. That's quite a high voltage and a, and a penalty to pay, especially considering that what we would expect from this would be that our output voltage would only need to be 2 times VOV. Instead, here it's 2 times VOV plus a VTH. So really, we've got an extra VTH. Let's talk a little bit about voltage headroom. Oftentimes, when we're making amplifiers, we'd like to know how big the output voltage swing can be. So here we have our actively loaded amplifier. It's a PMOS 
common source amplifier with an NMOS current source load. And we know that we would need at least a VOV across either of these devices, assuming that the bias conditions are met at the gates. We know that the voltage gain for this amplifier is equal to GM1 times RO1 in parallel with RO2. So it's a very high voltage gain. And now we know that the output voltage maximum would be a VDD minus a VOV for the PMOS device and the VO min would be equal to ground plus a VOV in the overdrive for the NMOS device. So let's say we put a fairly big input signal swing into this amplifier. What's gonna happen at the output? Well, if the swing is big, this is an inverting amplifier. So we're gonna see the output go down and clip at the minimum voltage and then it'll go up and clip at the positive voltage and it'll keep doing this so it'll go up and down flipping at the min and max voltage so this range between the min and max voltage is the voltage headroom that we have to operate in essentially what's happening here is we want our devices to act like current sources and we know that it acts more or less like a current source once we're above a VOV. When it's in this range, we get a really big slope, or I should say a really small slope for the current versus voltage line. And the slope is proportional to one over the output resistance. And we ideally hope that the output resistance is very big. Now we know that we can change VOV the VOV is equal to 2ID over mu times C ox times W over L. So we can change VOV by changing the size of the device. But if we change the size of the device, we also affect the uh, output resistance. So we have to be wary of that. Now, what we really care about with amplifiers uh, is the dynamic range. And the dynamic range is the output maximum voltage swing divided by the output voltage minimum. Now, in our amplifiers, the output maximum swing is determined by this operating region, staying operating as a current source. And the minimum swing that we can detect is going to be limited by noise from the amplifier. So we have a dilemma. Ultimately, we want to maintain a high resistance. We want to keep these things acting as current sources. So the real question is, can we improve the cascode circuitry so that we can get a little bit higher output swing while still maintaining this high resistance? And we'll look at one way to do that in the next video.